Full self-driving by many is already looked at as overpriced, way too expensive, and I'll be honest, I know lots of Tesla owners that have said on the record that they would not spend $10,000 on it today, even though they spent six or $7,000 on it a few years ago. There were some recent rumors going around based on some source code that was showing up on Reddit suggesting that perhaps Tesla was considering bringing back enhanced autopilot for $4,000, which it's already available in Europe because the differences between enhanced autopilot and FSD over there are almost unnoticeable because of all the EU guidelines that Tesla has to abide by. It basically makes FSD kind of pointless. But I agree that perhaps bringing back enhanced autopilot would be a good idea in the States, particularly if the other leaked spec within the source code ends up happening, which is that the next full self-driving price increase is going to go up by $4,000 and make full self-driving outright cost fourteen grand, which I think it's safe to say is getting all already pretty crazy. I mean, 10k alone, I have to imagine Tesla is seeing less and less people opt for full self-driving as time goes on. Similar to how the Model S and X serve a more premium luxury demographic, every time you bump up full self-driving another couple grand, that puts it in a harder and harder to reach place for people to justify, especially when, for many people, autopilot covers the basics fine, and they like a lot of the features that the full self-driving package offers, but putting that behind a $10,000 software package just makes it far too hard to justify. Once you're in the five figures department, that's when I could see a lot of people just flat out saying, nope, not interested. But my prediction is that Tesla will not increase the price of full self-driving until the subscription option does become available. Some other unreliable sources were alluding to the idea of there being a two-tiered system for the full self-driving subscription, where for $100 a month, you would get all highway travel covered. So automatic lane changing, and of course, autopilot would be included with that and perhaps that $100 tier would also grant you access to things like smart summon and auto park but then there would be a $200 a month tier but that honestly sounds way too cheap to be true because if it was $200 a month instead of $14,000 outright I'm pretty sure everybody would just opt for the monthly subscription but that $200 a month package would grant you access to everything so all of the turning on city streets roundabout basically all of the amazing autonomous driving features we've seen on the FSD beta, which certain YouTubers have now, you would be able to access for $200 a month. But if you do some very basic math, you can quickly figure out $2,400 a year on that subscription, and you would easily have to keep paying for five to six years for that subscription to be worth it. And if it's month to month, you can kind of pick and choose when you want to subscribe to it and then unsubscribe when you're not interested. Even if you were willing to drop the $14,000 and you decided, well, it's the best autonomous driving system in the world, I think that money is worth it, it's still going to be attached just to that vehicle, which means you cannot transfer it later onto another Tesla, and Elon and earnings calls has said they have no interest in bringing that feature to market, which is why I think even if the subscription price for full self-driving is $250, $300, it's definitely going to be worth it to many because they know that they don't have to drop five figures into a car that they may decide they don't want anymore very easily. New Cybertruck comes out, updated Model Y, updated Model X, people want to upgrade, and if a few years down the road they decide, you know, know what, I think I want to opt for a different Tesla with newer batteries, with a better screen, with an AMD graphics card built in so that there's more gaming performance on the inside. Whatever the reason is, you won't be able to bring that $10,000 or $14,000 full self driving package with you. So they would much rather spend $5,000 to $7,000 in monthly subscription costs, knowing that at least they get to save a few grand that they can put towards their next vehicle. So it all falls down to how long you plan on keeping your current Tesla or your current vehicle. If you're the type of person that plans on buying a Tesla and keeping it for 10 years, 20 years, and longer, then I could see full self-driving starting to make it worth it, and hopefully you just don't total the vehicle in some type of accident, because I'm still unsure. Even if Tesla insurance will give you full self-driving back if you get in an accident and you want your vehicle to be fully replaced, especially if when you paid for full self-driving it was $7,000 and now it's twice that, is Tesla insurance going to just cover that extra cost for you? Uh, we'll find out in time, but I hope Tesla is thinking a bit more diligently moving forward about how full self-driving is looking to the average person. I'm sure the tech enthusiast and the Tesla fanboy is getting really, really excited about these V9 updates, but keep in mind the rest of the people who paid for the full self-driving package have still yet to see that beta, and they're still kind of waiting for Tesla to do something about it. So the idea of raising the price because the features got better, even though the beta is still limited to only 1,000, 
2,000 or 2,000 people. Feels kind of unfair to a lot of people that have been watching the price go up and up and up despite not really many features changing and there's still a bunch of phantom breaking going on and limited options whenever the weather's bad and that type of thing. So I get that there's some inflation and Elon was using that as the reason as to why Tesla's vehicles have been getting more expensive despite them removing lumbar support and radar. The cost of producing these vehicles doesn't appear to be going down, but does that justify the price of the full self-driving package going up way past $10,000? And does it even really make sense to keep around a full self-driving package if it starts to exceed $20,000? And Tesla may be trying really, really hard to lower the cost of parts so that they can make their vehicles more affordable, but they don't appear to have that same logic for full self-driving software. That they plan on making more and more expensive as time goes on, and until a competitor is able to match the features for a lower price, Tesla really has no incentive on lowering it. And my guess is that Tesla basically does not see many sales of full self-driving today at 10 grand, but the only time they do see a surge in full self-driving sales is when they announce a price increase. So it's kind of a negative loop for us everyday consumers, but perhaps Tesla did not see many people buying full self-driving for $8,000 until they announced that $10,000 was a couple weeks away. And then they saw a ton of people spending $8,000 on full self-driving because they felt like it was a bargain. And maybe Tesla is going to do that exact same thing with full self-driving today. Maybe not many people are paying 10 grand, but if they find out that in a couple weeks or in a month or two, it's going to cost $14,000, then yeah, that will get a bunch of people to spend $10,000 on it today because they'll be like, hey, my vehicle is going to be appreciating in value. It's going to have full self-driving, which is worth a lot of money, and I just got it on sale. So I personally think the biggest issue with the package is just that they're calling it full self-driving and they've been selling it as that for four to five years. Yeah, you can tell within the fine print that it's not full self-driving and that's just something they hope to achieve one day, but there's literally been three or four years now of Elon Musk saying, yeah, it'll be feature complete level five by the end of next year. And that just keeps on happening. It keeps on happening. So how many times are we supposed to believe it's right around the corner and it just still doesn't happen? I think they should just call it enhanced autopilot. I don't have any issues with there being a very expensive software package that allows the car to do more than it can do by default. That's fine. But when you're calling it full self-driving, especially when people were including that in their lease payments, which lasted for three years. And during the three years of that lease, they never once got level three or level four autonomy. That starts to feel a little weird. And I wouldn't be shocked if Tesla has to start facing some class action lawsuits because of that kind of advertising for this amount of time. What do you guys think Tesla should do? Do you think $14,000 is way too much or way too little? Feel free to let me know. Thank you all for watching. Hope you have an excellent rest of your day. Take care.